It's an honor to be here. Um, and I just ask you to be present with me for about three minutes. I'm going to um, talk about COP21 and my experience there. Um, but hello, everyone. Uh, hello, fellow delegates. 2015 was the hottest uh, average global temperature uh, year ever recorded. Climate change is the biggest threat we face. We all know this, but I learned it for the first time five years ago. As a young person facing most of the repercussions of climate change, I am determined we will find a solution. So in the last five years, I've helped high school and college students create and implement climate action plans in schools and communities. From Michigan to Vermont, from Finland to Sri Lanka, from simple recycling programs to installing new heating systems. These projects teach students new skills, but more importantly, they make a real contribution to local communities, reducing their impact on the environment. To date, 25,000 students have learned about climate science and are working to cut greenhouse gas emissions. We need a movement of young people to be leaders in creating a more sustainable and resilient world. Luckily, that movement already exists. In December, I was honored to attend the UN Climate Talks in Paris as a youth delegate. I helped organize and spoke at two panel events showcasing student-led initiatives such as hydroponic systems in India and energy research in Africa. Both events were supported by the White House, the U.S. Department of State, the U.S. Department of Energy, and the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA. In the first panel, students discussed their work with expert scientists and decision makers, such as NOAA and the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. The second panel of COP21 negotiators critiqued students' plans and discussed how they relate to the global negotiations. Young people from science centers in five countries around the world joined online asking questions and providing comments through Twitter. My sense from those meetings was that the panelists thought the future was in good hands, our hands. The only questions were whether lawmakers and policymakers would implement the necessary changes. They were confident young people were doing their part. So I believe our voice is starting to be heard. There are many youth events and side conferences at COP21 with nearly 200 countries represented, making it the largest conference of parties in UNFCCC history. It could be a turning point. And the decisions our world leaders make now to follow through on their commitments are critical. For those written agreements to come true, we all need to support their implementation. My generation and generations to come have the greatest urgency to take action. There are thousands of young people already taking action. Governments just have to work with us, to listen to us, to hear our voice. I urge you to join me, to join us, to help us take back our future. Thank you.